สักบานเนอ and the redeemer of the Lord said Amen I said the redeem said Amen Thankful again to the God of Heaven. Whew, that's touching y'all. I said that's touching y'all. Amen. When you know that you've been changed, when you know that there's a transformation that has happened in your life, when you know where you used to be and, and where God done brought you to, somebody ought to say Amen. When you Know what you used to do. Now God uses you in another way. When you, Lord, how much that? When you know you've been, when you know you've been changed. I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul as he was Acts chapter nine, uh, breathing out, threatening, and, and and running a mark amongst the church and bringing folk back to Jerusalem, tied, bound, and. Bringing them back live or dead, and one day he was headed down to Damascus with orders to bring folk back. But somewhere down the way, God sent down an angel, hello somebody from heaven, and blind him on the Damascus road. And and, and 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 when he dropped to his knees, he couldn't see anything. And when when he began to ask, "Who is it, Lord?" and he said, "Why ask Saul? I, I, I'm God, and why are you kicking against the prick?" Amen. He had a message for old Saul, and Saul got on up, and he went down to Ananias' house, who were waiting on y'all. Ain't hearing me. I'm just talking about sometimes in life there is a change, and when you know you've been changed, when you know you ain't who you used to be, because God has touched your life. Now you live for God. Is that all right, somebody? Now you live for God. We're we're thankful to that same God. For allowing us to be here on this very, very beautiful Lord's Day morning, ain't it beautiful outside? This is fall, Rod. <laughs> We're moving out of summer into the fall. Nothing like good fall weather. Good fall weather brings in some good football, Larry. <laughs> It just makes you get ready. Amen. It makes you know that. Amen. There are some good days ahead. Hello, somebody. It's good, good to be here. Good to see everyone who have graced our audience on this morning. I tell you, we we've had some good song serving. Amen. I think we had some good song serving. Amen. We could sing just a little bit more if y'all wouldn't mind. I think we could sing just a little bit more. We had some good song service last Sunday. Amen. Amen. We brought in some new song leader. <laughs> We had Brother Larry Lanier. We had Brother Pele McDaniel. We had Brother Billy Thompson and Brother Joe Ward. We brought in some new song leaders, Amen. On last Lord's Day, in 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 presence of our other song leaders. But I tell you what, we got a house full of song leaders. We almost had Maurice ready to go, Amen. Amen. God is good, y'all. I say God is good, and He is good. He's good all the time. Always good to have Larry and Teresa with us. Amen. We want to let them know that they just home. They just home, folk. And it's certainly good to have have them with us. Thank Brother Larry and the teachers today for their diligence in presenting their lessons. Uh, I want to thank Brother Ryan as well as Sister Jean as they continue to prepare our young folk for the upcoming Bible Bowl season. Amen. We again want to encourage the parents and grandparents to uh, make sure your kids ready. Uh, yesterday we had a trial run. Amen. They were not quite ready, but uh, we're going to really be ready on the next session, which will be the second Saturday of October. So we're looking forward to that. We've got a bunch of events coming up within the next few weeks. So we just ask you to mark your calendar. Uh, that we might be able to fellowship one, one with another. We got preachers scattered all over the place. Amen. Good to have brother and sister Story back. Amen. They've been laboring in Manchester, Tennessee, down in Winchester, down in Freedom Hometown. <laughs> Amen. Working with the old Calvin Road Church down there, and, and they love brother Story down there. But I told them they can't have him. <laughs> He belonged to Green Meadow. Amen. <laughs> 
Amen. We appreciate him and his efforts as well as Brother Russell is uh, at the Sand Hill Church on today filling in for Brother Albert Nelson who had surgery a few weeks ago and still not able to put that word out there yet. So we appreciate Brother Russell and his efforts as well uh, as he labors with the uh, Sand Hill Church. Good and good to have everyone back with us. We know that uh, last week was the Labor Day ho holiday, and we had many members that were out, uh, but it is certainly good to have you, have you back with us on today. We're, we're not going to hold you long. We are uh, scheduled to go to the uh, community care nursing home after our morning service, uh, and so we want to go ahead on and uh, make way and make room for that event. Uh, as Brother Thompson, Billy has a lined up our service for today and we're just hoping that everybody will will come and go and support that work there at the at the nursing home amen 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 amen, amen. with that being said I had something else on my mind but as you get older you forget some things <laughs> somebody ought to say amen some of y'all done forgot some stuff already today. I said, as you get older, you'll forget some things. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord. I did want to say to Brother Larry, the yard looks good. I want to commend you on your efforts in keeping, keeping the facility looking good. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing like a good-looking church. Uh, somebody ought to say Amen. Y'all would have a fit if we come up in the grass, be everywhere, and stuff all out in the yard, and, and the building falling apart. Hello, y'all. Amen. But somebody has to do the work. Certainly, we appreciate him for his effort. There's, again, a word from the Lord. The Apostle Paul, as he writes to the young evangelist Timothy in his second letter to the preacher, Paul reminds him in 2 Timothy chapter 3 of the coming apostasy uh, of the falling away in his writing. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 1, Know this also, that in the last days perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Paul went on to say, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fears, despisers of those things that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, Paul says to the young preacher, for such turn away from. He said, now for of this sort are they which creep into houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Y'all stay with me now. Now, now, as James and Jambos withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as there also was. Watch what he says to the young preacher. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, the manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience, persecution, affliction, which came to me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra were persecution. He says, I endured, but out of them all, the Lord, oh, oh, that's something good right there, y'all. Paul said, out of all of that, the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, Paul says, shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and even being deceived. But watch this, he said, but continue thou in the things which thou have learned and thou have been assured of, amen, somebody, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And then he appeals to uh, the young preacher's 
uh, adolescent, uh, his growing up, he says, and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Here, here's where I want to be in this text. In verse number 16, uh, 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 Paul goes on to say, For all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, I said that the man of God, I, I, I need to put it to you in the generic uh, 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 not only the man, but the man and the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All scripture. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And that scripture is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all, all good works. Just for a moment, allow me to use my subject, beginning to end. Beginning to end. When, when I, I, I first think in terms of beginning to end, there are some foundational truths that, that build and support the inspired word of God. You, you, you see, it was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1 when Moses wrote, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. It was in the beginning, y'all. It was in Revelation chapter 22 where the apostle John wrote in verse number 13 of Jesus, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. I am the first and the last. I, I, I'm talking about beginning to end. Then in the gospel according to John chapter 1 and Verse number one, I hear John say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then John doubled back again in 1 John chapter 1 and verse number one, when John wrote, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled it, it is the Word of life. I hear, I hear the Apostle Paul, or rather the Apostle Peter, as he writes in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 20. He said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm just trying to lay my foundation, y'all. Beginning to end. Jesus himself said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 35. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 21 and verse 33, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word he said, my word shall last. Is that all right? It shall last forever. In other words, it shall not ever pass away. When, when, when we recognize this morning that God's word is inspired, look like it ought to inspire us. I, I think I said something. I said, when we come to recognize that the Word of God is an inspired Word, look like that Word that is inspired ought to inspire us. 
What are you saying, Thompson? I'm saying when we have an inspired word, look like we ought to be moved. We ought to be inspired to be more faithful to the Lord. We ought to be inspired to do more for God. We ought to be inspired. Hello, somebody. To be better than we ever have been when we recognize and understand that God's word is inspired, it ought to inspire us. It, it, it ought to cause us to get up off our lazy bones. It ought to cause us to get off our comfortable seats. It ought to cause us to stand and march for the Lord when we know the word of God is an inspired word of God. It ought to make us Hello, somebody. Consider ourselves. Hello, y'all. And, and, and when we consider that all Scripture comes from God. Let me, let me say this again, y'all. All Scripture comes from God, not, not just the selective bits and pieces. Hello, somebody. Not just the one that suits us. Not just the Scripture that we agree with. But all scripture, hello somebody. You see, some folk uh, like to pick and choose what scripture is inspired by God. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, everything upon the pages of inspiration has been inspired. I said it's been inspired by God. Is that all right? Everything, everything found in the book, not only is it inspired of God, but it has been God breathed. I said it's been God breathed. I, I, I mean God breathed into, hello y'all, into the word of God. Hello. I'm just talking about the beginning and the end. When we understand, I said when we understand, I guess first of all we got to understand, don't we? Amen. I don't think we're going to do no better till we understand that, that God's word is indeed, it is inspired, it's God breathed, we then should uh, be encouraged that God, watch this, God uses the scripture, God uses his word to teach us. Hello somebody, y'all do know that this is a teaching tool, don't it? He, he, he uses this to teach us. He uses this to grow us. He uses this to move us. He, he uses the word of God that we might move closer. I said we might move closer to becoming the people that God created in the beginning. I'm talking about the inspired word, y'all. I'm talking about the inspired word of God ought to help us and encourage us to move closer and closer to God. Some of the most profound lessons, the most life-changing moments that have come within our lives have come from the inspiration and the wisdom. Hello, y'all that it found in this book. Hello, y'all. I said some of the most changing moments, some of the most uh, uh, profound lessons that, uh, 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 that we have learned, we can understand that it is by the inspired word of God that we have found. When I look at lessons... Inspired by the book. Y'all got, got a few more minutes. I, I promise you I wasn't going to be long today. When I look at uh, lessons inspired of the book, uh, number one, I, I can look at a lesson on attitude. Hello, y'all. On attitude. Somebody said something about attitudes in Sunday school. Am I right? You, 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 you see, this book, I said this book will help you with your attitude. Hello, somebody. You, you may not know it, but this book will help you in your attitude. Let me, let me tell you something about your, 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 your attitude. You, 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 you see, when you, you put your attitude and latitude together, you see your attitude, amen, 
uh, tells how far your, hello, no, your attitude tells you how far you're going up is what I'm trying to say, amen. Your attitude will prescribe your latitude. When your attitude ain't right, oh, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. And then your latitude ain't right. Uh, let me just say it in, in plain terms. When, 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 when you, uh, amen, got a bad attitude, you ain't going far. Hello, somebody. Y'all did know attitudes to keep you grounded, won't you? They won't let you go nowhere. And, and sometimes when we get in our bad attitudes, you know who we affect the most? We affect ourselves more than we affect anybody else. Lessons from the book. Amen. Will teach us about our attitude. Lessons from the book will, will teach us on faith. Hello, somebody. Somebody want to build up their faith? You, you ought to get in the book. You ought to be in the inspired, the God-breathed word of God. The Bible already told us that faith come by what? Faith come by hearing, and hearing is by what? The word of God. So, 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 so there is a lesson on faith in the book. And if you hadn't found it yet, let me help somebody. Go over to Hebrews chapter 11, which has been called the faith chapter. It takes you from Abraham to Moses to Jacob, hello, to Rahab. It tells you, hello, somebody. You, 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 you need to know about some faith? Get in the book. Is that all right? Ask somebody. Somebody said faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, 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 the Bible, Scripture teaches us lessons on faith. Can I give you one quick one? You remember, you remember when Jesus, a Amen. When Jesus was on the boat, and, and, and uh, rather the disciples was on the boat, and Jesus had come out of the mountain praying, and he was walking on water. Y'all remember that? He was walking to the boat, and they looked out, and they thought he was a ghost. I'm paraphrasing now. They didn't know exactly what it was, but when he got a little bit closer, I, 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 I believe they recognized him because Peter said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come to you. Am I right about it? You know what got Peter out of the boat? It was his faith that that was Jesus that was walking on the water. Hello, somebody. Look like all of them would have got out of the boat. But, uh, you know, we, 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 we in a place where everybody ain't going to get out of the boat. But sometimes you, every now and then you need to get out of the boat. And Peter stepped out of the boat and Peter began to walk. Hello, somebody. I'm just giving you a faith lesson. Peter began to walk on the water. But when he took his eyes, never take your eyes off of Jesus. <laughs> When he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink down, and Jesus had to come and, and save him. But my point is, uh, he had enough faith uh, to get out of the boat. Uh, let me tell you something else about this book. Uh, I told you on last week, for uh, uh, those who were here, amen, uh, 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 there's a lesson on integrity. Amen. I've been sticking to that word, integrity. <laughs> There's a lesson on integrity. Y'all do know what integrity is. It's the manner that you conduct yourself in. It is your character. Hello, I tell you all the time. It ain't, it ain't nothing to be a character, but it's something to have some character. Y'all will catch that a little bit later. <laughs> a, 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 amen. Your integrity, what you stand for, what you, what, hello, y'all. There's some lessons on integrity. Am I right? There's some lessons on integrity. There's some lessons on being honest. There's some lessons on how you ought to conduct yourself. It's in the book. It is the inspired, the God-breathed word. And it is beginning to end. Can I give you another one? There's lessons on attitude. There's lessons on faith. There's lessons on integrity. And then there's lessons on, on, on priorities. Hello, y'all. I said there's lessons on priorities. 
every now and then we need to know what's more important. Somebody ought to say amen. Because uh, sometimes I, I focus gets off on the wrong track. But Jesus said in Matthew Gospel chapter 6 and verse number 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things. Some of y'all looking sad. Y'all ought to be happy. You ought to know that the God word is inspired. It is not man breathed, but it's God. But it's God breathed. Hello, y'all. It's just the word, y'all. And, and every now and then the word ought to, ought to the word ought to do something to you. Amen. Even on your baddest days, the, when you hear the word, it ought to it ought to take a lo it ought to take a load off. It may not get you to where you need to be, but it ought to be of a comfort somewhere. It, it, the word of God ought to help you in your everyday walks of life. If we didn't have the word, we wouldn't have anything. Thank God that it is the inspired. I said it, it is the inspired word of God. Not only did Paul admonish Timothy about the truth of the word, but he, he, he even told them that there are going to be some that try to change. Hello, somebody. He said there are going to be some that try to change the word of God. Said in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and Verse number one, he said, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Let me tell you something. Whatever God has created, God said is good. I said God said it's good. For whatever he has created, he said himself that it was that it was good. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Paul, Paul admonished this young Timothy. He said, now, you be on the lookout because there are going to be those who fall away. There are going to be an apostasy that come. Some who know the truth are going to turn away from the truth. He said, I need you to understand that. He said, but now you got to understand, you have heard the doctrine. You have heard and be, have witnessed those things of me. He said, you hold on, hold on to those things. He said, from a child, you have known the Holy Scripture. What Holy Scripture? That Scripture was is inspired by God. That Scripture was is doctrine, uh, is ready, it, 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 it. It, 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 it reproves you. It, it, it proves you and it reapproves you. Is it all right? It, it instructs you. It corrects you. Sister Ward had said on Wednesday night that that, 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 that word will rebuke you. It will, hello, y'all. It will encourage you. It will rebuke you. It will correct you. He said, in all instruction. Is that all right? Ain't that what Peter said? Peter said everything. Ain't that what he said in 1 Peter? I believe it is chapter 1, verse 3, somewhere over there. He said everything. Everything. I like to say in all things. Everything in all things. Amen. It's found upon the pages of inspiration. You, 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 you got to know when... When scripture don't match up with something somebody else is giving you, you better watch out. I say, I say, when when somebody is teaching you something that don't match up to God, because the word, Amen. You 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 know what the Bible says? Uh, everything in heaven has already been settled. You see, we don't need nobody to change the word of God, y'all. We don't need no correction to the word of God. It don't need no babysitter. 
It don't need no booster. Hello, y'all. Because <laughs> the word of God is already established. Is it all right? God already know what he wanted. He knowed how to get what he wanted. He said the scripture is moved. It's a moved scripture. He said holy men will move by the Holy Ghost and they pin. Hello, y'all. I, 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 Brother Nelson, I don't see no man coming up with this book. Amen. You know how I know it's inspired? It is. It's God breathed. Is that all right? It is from the mind. It is from the mind of God. And, and, I, and I don't know about you, but that's enough. That's enough for me. He says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, after he had set things in order in the church, you, you remember uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, Paul instructs Timothy how to set things in order for the church. He talked about the deacons and he talked about the bishop, the elder, the shepherds, the overseers. And then he says in verse 14, these things write I unto you, hoping to come to you shortly. But if I tarry long, hello, y'all. You got to know, you got to know Timothy was down in Ephesus dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. Amen. I said he was dealing with a whole bunch of stuff, y'all. There was some folk down in Ephesus who were giving Timothy a run for his money. And but Paul encouraged him to be strong in the word. Am I right about it? Told him, don't let them despise your youth, but you stand firm. You be pure on the word of God. And he gave him instruction on how to set the church in order, how to ordain deacons and elders in the church. And then he said, uh, 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 these things I write to you that I'm coming to you shortly. He said, but if I tarry long, but if I don't get there, as soon as I would like to, he said, but you ought to know how to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Watch this now. He wasn't through. And he said, now, and without controversy, great is the mystery uh, 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 of godliness. God manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and Christ received up into glory. I, 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 I'm just talking about beginning to end. And that's why, that's why he told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4 in verse number 1, he says, preach the word. Ain't that what he said? Preach the word. I, I, I say to you story, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust said they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they said, turn away their ears from the truth that they might hear some fables. Amen. He said, but watch out. He said, but watch out. Is that all right? He said, you got to endure affliction. Uh, you got to do the work of an evangelist. And you have to make foolproof your ministry. Beginning to end. The Hebrew writer declared in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8. For God is the same yesterday. Today and tomorrow. Thank God, Sister Kate, we serve a no change in God. Is that all right? Thank God we serve a God that he's the same yesterday, today, and he ain't going to be no different tomorrow. That's good news, y'all. We win a world when folk change every time they move. <laughs> Amen. But it's good to know God. God is stable uh, in his convictions. Am I right? Uh, I said God is stable in the conviction. One point, one point said of this book that it is a road map. Y'all ever heard that? That is a road map from earth to glory. Amen. Amen. You want to know amen how 
you can get to heaven, just stay on the road. Is that all right? Let me tell you something. Now, Jesus talks about two roads. There's a wide road, and there's a narrow road. Am I right about it? Don't, don't get caught on the wide road. Amen. If you want to be on the road, you got to be on the narrow road. He said, where well, there'll be few that find. Is that all right? I, 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 I like that, uh, the road map. Amen. Amen. We, 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 we investigated, uh, invested rather in our global position systems. We invested in those things that help us go from one place Y'all might as well say amen to another. Some of y'all don't go nowhere without it no more. A a amen. Some folk done forgot how to get to a place if they don't have. Hello, y'all. Come on, y'all. Let's have some fun. <laughs> some folk don't even know how to get from one place to another unless they got to put it in their telephone. You know, when we begin to rely on our devices to lead us, hello, y'all. We, we, we getting lost by then. <laughs> but we need to know who... <laughs> who we are and where we are in the Lord. Amen, amen. I, I got to close out. I got to close out. Uh, Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, again, according to his divine power, had given to us all things, everything that pertain unto life and to godliness. The book, y'all. The inspired word of God. All scripture. From the beginning. I said all scripture. From the beginning. From Genesis chapter 1. To Revelation chapter 2. All scripture. Is inspired. Of God. The book. According to Nehemiah chapter 8, it is the book of law. According to Psalms chapter 1, it is the law of the Lord. According to Romans chapter 1, it is the holy scriptures. According to John chapter 5 and verse number 39, it is the scripture. According to Hebrews chapter 4 and Verse number 12 is the word of God according to James chapter 1 verses 21 through 23. It is the word according to Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 16. It is the word of life according to Revelation 22 and 19. It is the book of God. I say it's the book of God. Jeremiah said it was the fire. David said it was a lamb. Jesus said it was a sea. Jeremiah said it was a hammer. Paul said it was a sword. And Jesus said it was the truth. Hello, somebody. I said, Jesus said it was the truth. He said, buy the truth and sell it not. He said, the truth shall make you, shall make you free. God's inspired word. God looked down, y'all, and he found Moses. And he said, Moses, I commission you to write the Pentateuch. I commission you to write the first five books of the Bible. Then he reached back and he started beginning to get Joshua and he started to get the judges and he started to get those boys and he put them aside and he breathed in them. That God breathed Holy Spirit and they begin to write and labor in the word of God. God's inspired word took us down through the book of poetry, amen, through the Psalms, through Proverbs, through Ecclesiastes, through the Psalms of Psalm love. He put them out in the poetry book. Then when he got through, hello somebody, start giving us the old and the new prophets. As they began to lead us to the cross. Hello, somebody. And then they took us to Jesus. When Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John began to write their encounters of the gospel. Then Paul and Luke came in with the acts of the apostles as they laid the foundation for the church. I said for the church. Then Paul began to circulate his letters 
throughout all Asia Minor, throughout all Macedonia, and throughout all Antioch and Jerusalem, and all those cities around the world, through Rome, through Macedonia, through Caesarea, and all of those places, Paul began to lay out a foundation begin to send instruction to a young preacher, one by the name of Timothy and the other by the name of Titus. And then the Hebrew writer began to write of God, of Jesus, and how it was no longer no need to go and boo, kill bulls and heifers anymore because Christ done became the, hello somebody, Christ done became the sacrifice for all men, reaching back the blood all the way back to the beginning and going on forward to the end. From the beginning to the end. Is that all right? And then, then he exiled John to the Isle of Patmos. Y'all remember that? John says, uh, the Spirit says, write these things which I show you. And John began to write. Hello, somebody. The inspired word of God. From the beginning to the end. That's the lesson for this morning. This morning, if you're not a child of God, you come by the hearing of the word, believing in the same, repenting of your sins, confess Jesus to be the divine son of God, go down in the watery grave of baptism for the remissions of sin. You want to know what that is? That's inspired. I said, that's inspired. And when you come up out of the water, the Bible declares that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Am I, am I right about it? Old things will have passed away. Behold, all things shall, shall be new. Y'all want to know what that is? That's inspired. He and he said, walk circumspectly. Is that all right? That's inspired. And then when he said, if you live faithful, according to Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10, if you live faithful, even unto death, he said, I give you a crown of life that faded not away. That's inspired, y'all. I said, that's inspired. Amen. Amen. And you know what else inspired? When he says, uh, 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 when you stand before God and he looks over the record. You, you, you know when the books are open. Y'all do know you're writing a book. Let me, let, me look, let me appeal to somebody. Amen. Our Wednesday night Bible class said when the preacher preach, he needs to appeal to somebody. <laughs> let me appeal to somebody. The book going to be open. Amen. Amen. You want to be found in the book of life. Am I right? I see, there are two books now. You want to be found in the book of life. Amen. Amen. And when you stand before God and you look over your record, he look at your epitaph. Uh, 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 you know, he go from dash to dash. It, 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 somebody said it don't matter about the dashes. What matters is what's in between the dashes. Is that all right? Amen. And when you stand before God, this inspired y'all. He gonna say, well done. Well done. Let me, let me, let me, let me share some sad news too. While he's saying well done to some he going to be saying, others, depart from me. Ye that work of iniquity, he said, because I never, I never knew you. Hello, somebody. But we want to hear. I said, we want to hear. Come on, y'all. We want to hear. Well done. Thy good and thy faithful servant, for you've been faithful over few things. Come on up. Let me usher you on up. And let me make you ruler over many. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. If you have obeyed, well, straight away, come on back and get right with God. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. While together we stand and sing the invitation song. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I, I can't. I just can't make it without you, without you, Lord. Oh, I need my Lord. I need you, Jesus. I can't 
I never would have made it without you, Lord. There was a time I was living in sin. Along came a Savior, and he took me in. He died on the cross for my sin, and that's why I love him until the end. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, and I can't I just can't make it without you, Lord. There was a time in my life I was living in sin, living without Christ. It made me start to wonder, wonder just what I did wrong to make my race so hard to run without you lord without you lord without you lord i can't i just can't make it without you lord 